describe what's happening here today? Well, today marks the fifth anniversary of Julian entering the embassy to claim asylum vis-à-vis -vis the risk of political persecution and cruel treatment in the United States. And at the time he entered, of course, Chelsea Manning was standing trial. The special rapporteur on torture had issued a finding that she herself had been subjected to cruel treatment during the interrogations. And Ecuador issued a well-reasoned decision based on this evidence that he had a right to asylum under several legal instruments, but most importantly, the 1951 Refugee Convention, to which the UK is a state party. Now, obviously, the UN came out with a ruling last year that the UK and Sweden were both jointly responsible for his illegal and arbitrary detention over a course of seven years. Now, that's over a year and a half ago almost, and yet the UK maintains the confinement of Julian, um, even though Sweden has now abandoned these allegations the first prosecutor found to be unfounded anyway, uh, the UK has maintained that he would still be arrested if he were to leave the embassy. And that's not the fact that the UN specifically said that the UK had an obligation to ensure his freedom mm -hmm. and security. So today Julian was going to make a special announcement, mm -hmm. but his lawyers got confirmation that they'll be meeting with the British authorities. Mm -hmm. So Julian didn't want to prejudice those discussions because it's essential that there's a resolution to this illegal impasse. And as the UN said, these conditions amount to inhumane treatment. Um, and it's just unacceptable that there be one day longer that he stays here. Yeah. So really we're calling on the UK to ensure his safe passage to okay. everyone. With regards to these discussions happening later today, are you more optimistic about what the result might be? I am hopeful because this can't continue. I mean, it's ridiculous that the UK would put its imprimatur on a situation of illegal, arbitrary detention amounting to inhumane treatment. And it's, it's a sound that the UK would spend its time and resources enforcing this when there's so many other issues it should be focusing on. I mean, essentially, Julian just here alone has been five years from what the UN said was the situation similar to house arrest, although without, without any of the benefits of house arrest. And when you look at normal bail violations, the maximum sentence is 12 months. Yeah. Now obviously he didn't come in here because he was not wanting to comply with bail. He came in here to exercise his legal entitlement to claim asylum. So given this situation, the UK really should abandon this arrest warrant, comply with the UN ruling, and allow him to go to Ecuador where he has effective protection against the unfair proceedings in the US. And what are the sort of next steps with regards to the legal negotiations? Again, the reason we're not speaking today was to, was not to prejudice the negotiations, mm -hmm. but what we would hope is that the UK would allow him to save passage as soon as possible to Ecuador, since he does have a right of asylum in Ecuador, and that gives him effective protection against the proceedings against him and the Greeks in the United States. And um, do you have any ideas if he will be speaking at a later point? That may depend on what's happening with these discussions. I mean, I would hope that the next step is him actually leaving the embassy. Yeah. <laughs> because, as I said, one day for is too long. Great. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Free Assange! Free Assange! Telling the truth is not a crime. Telling the truth is not a crime. Safe passage for Julian. Safe passage for Julian. Viva Ecuador! Viva Ecuador!